Well, thanks, Shaka. The Kyoto Protocol was negotiated in December 1997 and came into force in February 2005. The treaty tried to minimize the human impact on climate change. And several countries, including the United States, have not ratified the protocol. Those nations are demanding more effective mechanism. But so far, some say they've failed to present an environmentally effective and economically feasible alternative. Well, this leads us to our question of the week, asking, given the threats many developing countries are likely to face due to climate change, should African governments commit to a new universal agreement to reduce greenhouse gas emissions? Well, we are going to open uh, with your Twitter responses. And uh, just a quick reminder that we are indeed tweeting live today. Uh, just use the hashtag uh, VOA Climate Change or VOA Combat Climate Change. And if you haven't yet, uh, please do follow us uh, on Twitter at uh, VOA Shaka. Speaking of it, let's go to a tweet from Dean Kayezi, who writes, more mitigation uh, measures are needed and also uh, some more climate uh, finance. Another tweet from Rodney uh, Tuhami, a law student at uh, Makarere University in Kampala, says, I don't think it's fair since the underdeveloped world needs industries to survive. Let's now turn uh, to uh, comments from our Facebook uh, uh, readers, Facebook followers. Basically, we'll go to uh, Ruva Rashi uh, Josfat uh, Omera from Lusaka in Zambia, who writes, climate change is about enhancing economic growth. This will increase the gap between Africa and wealthy countries. African nations cannot be financially independent with this global finance, with this global climate change policies rather. Well, Shaka and guess your take on these points uh, just made uh, on social media. Well, Benoit? Yes, Shaka. Yes. No, guess. these are very good uh, questions, you know, but um, our, our listeners, uh, all of us need to realize it's not an either or. It's not either economic growth or climate change mitigation. I, I think as uh, Derek uh, very eloquently presented, uh, you know, people even on the ground are taking their own, you know, lives in their own hands and saying, you know, I want light, I want electricity, I want my kids to be able to study, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. go to school. And they adopt energy solutions that are affordable, that now become uh, available. So that's a very, very, you know, clear example of climate action, which is, by the way, both mitigation and adaptation, yes. right? This is the beauty of it. Mm. By not using kerosene, those African households actually reduce emissions at their level. It, it's very, very uh, exemplary. Uh, and at the same time, they're going to do better because their kids are going to go to school and hopefully college. They'll get access to better education, better jobs, etc. So, so I think what we need more of is these win-wins, you know, where economic activity develops but in a cleaner way and so anything that the international can do to help Africa leapfrog the not so clean technologies the dirtier technologies that's what we need to do there's a great yearning for all of that everywhere uh, in Africa